Mr. Lipinski. Uh, thank you, Dr. Farr, and uh, thank Georgetown for, uh, for holding this uh, this morning, and uh, thank Jeff especially for, for putting this together and all his work on, on this issue. Uh, Jeff and um, and marie have gone through a lot of the, uh, uh, the philosophical on this. And uh, even though I have a, a PhD in political science, uh, I, I focus a lot more on the uh, uh, down to what exactly is going on here, what's the problem with it. Um, but let me first say that I voted for the uh, health care bill that first went through the House after the Stupac Amendment was uh, voted for and uh, attached to the bill. Uh, I said that I would not vote for a bill that uh, had coverage for uh, abortion. Uh, it was the last thing that was done on that bill because the uh, leadership, Democratic leadership, did not want that to be done. Um, but we got that done. Now the second time it went through, uh, I also had other problems with the bill, but I said, well, let's, move, let's just move this forward. Second time it went through, obviously, uh, things were different. We had a different policy. We uh, could not. I was part of the, the Stupac group. Uh, but when it came down to it, uh, I said I could not accept the um, executive order. And I had said that all along. I stuck with that. Uh, I didn't think that it was going to protect life as it uh, supposedly was uh, claimed that it was going to. So I voted against the, the health care law on the, on the final vote. Uh, and because of the abortion issue and a few other issues that I had disagreements with, we got to the point uh, with the uh, HHS mandate. And when the rule, the, the first the final draft, I guess, came out uh, in, uh, in August, I guess, of, of last year. And there was a lot of talk about it, you know, the, the requirement of, of covering, of, everyone likes to, to uh, focus on in the media, everyone who is uh, in favor of this likes to talk about this just as contraception, as if all we're talking about is, is contraception can be legal or not legal in this country. Uh, I think we passed that a long time ago. Uh, but uh, to require contraception, sterilization, and abortion-inducing drugs have to be covered. Uh, there, were a lot, there were a number of Democrats who said that they were not happy with this. Uh, even the, uh, the House Democratic Caucus chair, John Larson, said he was not happy with it. Why? I think because... Uh, there was really a groundswell of, of support, and people were hearing, especially uh, from their Catholic constituents, that uh, this was unacceptable. So after, what, six months, uh, the rule was, um, you know, they came forward and said they were, they were going to keep that, that same rule. There's a, a lot of uh, consternation, even from Democrats, and then the administration announced a uh, so-called accommodation. And let me, let me just read, because I was just going through, look, look through what I had said uh, in statements I had, had put out and why, why redo something if I did it so well the first time. Um, and I said, all, all the facts indicate the new mandate is the same as the old mandate. New words, same policy. Our understanding of the new policy is now limited to the fact sheet put out by the White House. It seems like it's pretty, pretty accurate. Uh, there are no other facts beyond that, really. Uh, this document says religious organizations will not have to provide contraceptive coverage or refer their employees to organizations that provide contraception. Of course, this is their quote. Of course, it's all focusing contraception. That's all they wanted to talk about. But the health care law says that all employers must provide health insurance for their employees or pay a penalty. And according to the White House, these same insurance plans that employers must provide, quote, will be required to provide contraceptive, contraception coverage to these women free of charge, unquote. 
So religious organizations have to provide health care coverage from insurance companies that are required to provide abortion, drug sterilization, and contraception. What changed? This is the same policy. We need a rule that protects religious liberty by allowing employers to provide health insurance coverage that does not include abortion drugs and other services that violate their conscience and religious doctrine. Instead, we got a so-called compromise. There's no compromise at all and provides no options for those with profound religious and moral objections to providing these services. To say that the insurer and not the employer is required to provide the coverage is a fiction. There is no accommodation for religious liberty. The rule remains coercive and still violates the long-standing tradition of protection for conscience rights in federal law. And that's where we are today. Unfortunately, uh, when that so-called accommodation was announced, uh, there were many who decided they felt that the pressure was now off them uh, and that they could go ahead and say, oh, this, was, this is okay. There, there's been an accommodation now made uh, to, to religious conscience. Clearly, that's, that's not the case. Uh, I think uh, we lost the uh, PR battle in a matter of hours on that, uh, on that Friday. Not surprisingly, on a Friday. Uh, the first decision was put out on a Friday. This was put out on, on a Friday. And uh, as soon as the media were able to describe this as an accommodation uh, that the uh, you know, there were some indications that the Catholic Church you know, was, the bishops were considering this, looking at this. Uh, it was by Friday night, it was, it was over. Uh, now, we're here today because we believe this should not be over and that there are enough Americans who understand, but we need more Americans to understand where we are at today and the threat that this is to religious freedom. Uh, it, it is a, uh, an uphill battle that we are, are facing right now, uh, but trying to draw the attention of people to what is going on here, as uh, already uh, Jeff and Anne Marie talked about, is the uh, you know, fundamental rights that we have as Americans, and uh, certainly our, our freedom of, of conscience and being able to, to follow that, I think, is, uh, is critical. I, I, I believe with the um, argument that was being used as the uh, uh, accommodation was announced that, well, birth control is insurer covers birth control, then their costs actually go down. So actually it's not a cost for uh, birth control. Uh, that just easily leads to the next argument that's going to be abortion has to be covered. And uh, abortion, don't worry, no one has to pay for it because it's cheaper for an insurance company to abort a child than to have to pay for the birth and care for, for that child. I mean, that is, that is not very far away. Uh, so no one wants to talk about that on, on the side that uh, supports this, but clearly that's, that's the, if they're gonna use that logic, that is, is what follows next. Uh, the, it's interesting that the, the Amish were exempt from the uh, Affordable Care Act, uh, from the health care law, uh, because they, uh, do not purchase insurance. Uh, instead, they all agree within their uh, church that they will take care of each other if someone has a uh, health care issue and they will pay for, for that. Uh, so the Amish were exempt. Uh, but uh, clearly, uh, we're going very far the other way. And uh, in, there's a lot of uh, ideas that people have about uh, why this was, uh, that why would the Amish be exempt, but uh, Catholics and others who have a uh, moral conscience objection to uh, you know, abortifacients and sterilization and contraception were, were not exempt. Uh, I think that uh, was a political issue as far as, uh, as, far as I'm I was concerned. So, as we, uh, as we sit here, uh, it sounds like the uh, health care law, the mandate has been 
been upheld. Uh, but this is something I, I believe is the, uh, will be one of the next uh, fights here, obviously, that goes to the court to protect uh, religious freedom. Um, so I think it's a critical that we engage everybody that we can in this. Uh, that the, uh, I'm happy the Catholic Church is stepping forward, although I'd like to see, uh, I would like personally to, to see more done on this. And uh, I think that uh, it's to a large extent a matter of informing people about what is going on. I thank you uh, all for, for being here, and I thank all my colleagues uh, here for the work that, uh, that they are doing uh, to try to uh, turn this around legislatively uh, and, and also raise the awareness of, of the American people to this uh, threat of, uh, on uh, our freedom. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lipinski.